Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So up till now we have learned what production function is, what is marginal product of labor, law of diminishing returns. So now we are on to employment. And in the first slide we have, classical economists assume that the quantity of labor employed would be determined by the forces of demand and supply in the market. So these, this statement is quite self-explanatory. From here we have learned that we now need to understand what labor demand is and what labor supply is okay so moving on to the next slide okay now we are on to understanding what labor demand is I mean, of course labor demand is demand for labor so as to produce output but there are certain assumptions here that we need to understand and first of them is firms are perfect competitors that choose their output to maximize profits now even if firms are not perfect competitor the second line that they choose their output to maxima maximize profit is pretty much valid for all the forms of market, be it monopoly, be it monopolistic competition. But let's just not deviate from these things. So in the very first line, we have firms are perfect competitors. All right. And also they choose their output to maximize profit. All right. Now we are on the second line and this is in the short run, output is varied solely by changing labor input. This is again something that we have studied already that labor we are considering as a variable input and output gonna vary directly with the amount of labor we are employing. Okay. Third statement is there is no barrier to adjustment of money wage. It simply means that as we have studied already the assumption of classical economics in my second lecture. So money wage is quite flexible. If there are so many people seeking work, the money wage gonna go down and we're gonna have people back to employment cycle okay i i simply hope that you people know what this statement means because i have explained this thing already now moving on to the third thing and this is a new thing here i'll explain it in detail and which is firms will increase output until marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue what is marginal cost marginal means addition and cost means cost so any additional cost due to hiring additional worker we get it as marginal cost and what is marginal revenue marginal means additional and revenue means revenue so any addition to revenue that we are having by producing one more unit of output rather by selling one more unit of output okay so marginal revenue has to be equal to marginal cost so as to maximize profit all right then now this is something that Freud has explained really, really well, which HL Ahuja has not, but we have to understand these things, okay? Here, in the first line, I have written, marginal cost of output will be equal to marginal cost of labor. When we say marginal cost of output, we basically are referring to labor only, because labor is the only variable factor. Fixed factor doesn't have any additional cost, okay? If if you are you have a machinery you have bought it for you have bought it once and you are producing certain amount of goods even if you go for adding additional output it's not gonna incur you any additional cost okay so additional cost of a fixed factor is absolutely zero so that is why we can use these terms interchangeably that marginal cost of output is basically marginal cost of labor okay now what is marginal cost marginal cost is equal to money wage divided by number of units of output produced by additional unit of labor now this thing we have to understand with patience because when i was trying to explain it to my friends they really really were finding it difficult to understand so i'll try to go slow here money wage is the nominal wage that we pay to worker for example we are hired we are hiring a worker and paying her rupees 100 per hour so 100 per hour will be her money wage all right and by employing her, we are getting two units of output. That is, that girl, after rendering her services, is giving us addition, additional two units of output. So that additional two units of output is it is her marginal productivity, right? We have studied this thing already, that marginal product of labor is addition to output divided by addition to labor. So addition to output here is let's say two units divided by addition of labor which is only one because we are hiring only one girl here. So 
change in output 2 divided by change in labor labor 1 we got 2 okay now money wage is rupees 100 so marginal cost will be 100 divided by 2 that is rupees 50 okay because I think I have explained it enough I really don't need to go for it because once more if you haven't got hold over it then do mention it in the comment section I'll try to explain it once again but yeah that's it money wage divided by marginal product of labor we got the marginal cost okay of output or labor because we, are, we can choose it interchangeably and it's not 100 because 100 unit 100 rupees is for two units of output but we need to divide it by marginal product of labor and for per unit wise we got rupees 50 only okay yeah now short run profit maximization maximization condition this is true for all the three forms of market that is marginal revenue has to be equal to marginal cost intuitively also we can understand it it's like we are employing one more worker and it costs us rupees 50 okay but by using her services we are getting a revenue of rupees 100 then it will pay the firm to keep on employing additional out additional labor because the returns from labor in terms of revenue outweigh the cost that they are giving us right so as long as the marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost firms gonna keep hiring the additional labor only when these two become equal firm gonna stop hiring additional labor okay so short run profit maximization condition is marginal revenue equal to marginal cost all right now in perfect competition we know that in place of marginal revenue we can write average revenue or price now here is a slightest of confusion because this thing is otherwise quite simple if any if we people have studied the economics now but what if we haven't so right now just memorize that in perfect competition marginal revenue is always equal to price or i can explain it with help of an example let's say we are going for a product let's say chocolates and chocolates are produced under perfectly competitive market so one unit of chocolate gonna cost us rupees 10 second unit of chocolate again 10 third unit again 10 so price or so price is rupees 10 doesn't matter which unit of chocolate we are producing okay also addition to revenue is also rupees 10 because one unit 10 second unit 2 into 10 that is 20 so additional revenue is also 10 so here marginal revenue is equal to price so long story short in perfect competition we have mr equal to price so we can use p in place of mr this is what it's been done here p is equal to mc now we have already studied that marginal cost is equal to money wage divided by marginal product of labor if you haven't got over this then please watch this again this is very very important and you just have to have a thorough understanding about this thing okay so price is equal to wage that is money wage divided by marginal product of labor now marginal product of labor gonna come this side and price gonna go this side and we have this thing marginal product of labor is equal to wage upon price and this is the real wage rate so we have to differentiate between money wage money wage as well as real wage anything where price comes into consideration that becomes real right like we have nominal gdp we have real gdp same way w stands for money wage and w divided by price stands for real wage and workers in reality are concerned about their real wage okay now what does this equation signifies it states that firm will hire up to the point where the additional output obtained by hiring one more worker that is marginal product of labor is just equal to the real wage paid to hire that worker okay i hope you got the idea here this is very very simple now moving on to this diagram this is just a diagram ex diagrammatic explanation of what we have already studied on to the x-axis we have employment on y-axis we have two things one real wage and second marginal product of labor now here we have drawn the marginal product of labor curve as i have already explained how to draw this in the video that i have made just prior to this one so this means constant returns to scale and this shows that diminishing returns to scale and from point f towards downside we have negative returns to scale 
let's say the real wage in the economy is 8 we haven't determine the real wage yet we are just assuming that let's say it is uh, it is 8 now if real wage is 8 then firms gonna hire labor up till point 3 because up because at 3 units of labor marginal product of labor gonna be equal to real wage that firm has to pay to workers and this equality is established at point D so the employment will be at 3 units level because if if workers if firm keep on hiring more and more units of labor then marginal productivity of labor gonna go down so for firm to keep on hiring more labor either wage rate has to go down which can come by decreasing the money wage or by increasing the prices so long story short but we need to understand here is to get the firm to hire more labor the real wage must fall because the additional output produced by each additional worker is declining okay because marginal product of labor is declining declining this is the reason why real wage rate has to fall in order to have the firm to employ more workers okay and this is what i have written in this slide and it's just the same in order to get the firm to hire more labor the real wage must fall because the additional output produced by each additional worker is declining and this is this is where we come into this equation that labor demand is equal to real wage rate and we have a negative relationship here that if real wage rate is high we're gonna have less demand of labor and if it's low we're gonna be having more demand of labor okay so this is it for today's and uh, today's uh, schedule i have tried to explain up till labor demand thing now we're gonna be starting with labor sky labor supply schedule and then we'll see the determination of equilibrium level of employment as per classical model okay i hope you got the idea whatever we have studied up till now so yeah thank you so much um, friends for watching this lecture and if you think that these are helping you in any way then do share it with your friends Thank you so much once again. Goodbye.